Hello viewers, this is the CAP RMF training. My name is Lucky Igwe. Be sure to subscribe to my channel as we proceed with today's topic. We'll continue with our series on the NIST RMF control families and we'll be looking at identification and authentication. Identification and authentication focuses on identifying information system users processes acting on behalf of the users and authenticate the identities of the users, processes or devices as a prerequisite to allowing access to organizational information system. Simply put, identification and authentication is the process by which a subject professes an identity and is the process of verifying that the claimed identity is valid. We will be looking at some of the controls that falls under the identification and authentication control family. We will be looking at the IA control, the IA2 control. The IA2 control talks about the identification and authentication organizational users. Now, the IA2 control focuses on the process of uniquely identifying users within an organization. What are the evidence that we can use to support the implementation of IA2 control? We can request for procedures addressing users' identification and authentication, information system design documentation. We can also request for a sample of one user added to the system during a period of review. The completed user access request form identifying system privileges requested and granted. We'll be looking at IA3 control. IA3 control talks about device identification and authentication. IA3 control ensures that all devices are uniquely identified and authenticated before connection is established. Now, what are some of the evidence that we can request for to satisfy IA3 control? Now, we can request for screenshots of how the host names are used to uniquely identify information system components. We can also request for device authentication for routers, switches, wireless. Examples are 802.1x, EAP, radio servers, TLS, Kerberos. Now, we'll be looking at IA4 control. IA4 control talks about identifier management identifier management. Now, IA4 control seeks to address how specific personnel roles within an information system is defined. How specific personnel roles within an information system is defined. It also seeks to address how the system prevents password reuse, passwords from being reused. It seeks to address how the system prevents passwords from being reused. IA4 control also seeks to address how the system disables a user account after an organizational policy defined number of days of inactivity. After an organizational policy defined days of inactivity. Now, what are some of the evidence that we can use to support the implementation of IA4 control? Now, we can request for processes and procedure that are used to manage user IDs, PKI certificates, PIF cards that are used to gain access to the system. We can also request 
for configuration settings showing that user identifier cannot be reused within an organizational defined period. Please note that some of the evidence that I have identified on this video today are subject to change because these controls are implemented in a different way for different agencies and for different systems. So the evidence that I've identified today are not the only evidence that should be requested for to satisfy the control implementation for each control identified today. There are lots of evidence. These are just one out of the list of evidence for IA2, one or two out of the list of evidence for IA3, one or two or three out of the list of evidence for IA4. There are lots of evidence that can also be requested to satisfy the control implementation. And the control implementation varies by from system to system and it varies from agency to agency. So these are just examples for the purpose of this video. I hope this video is helpful. Be sure to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.